law enforcement says, hey, we recognize that something is going on, this might be fishy, blah, 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 just a heads up, right? So information is being um, communicated to the Department of Homeland Security Fusion Center. That information is being analyzed. It's charged, I erased it, but it's charged with analysis. You see in bullet point two, um, analyze and share intel. That information is communicated to the federal government. So from bottom up, right? Bottom, which is good, in completely different discourse. But as far as the distribution of power, that's a very good approach. Bottom up approach is an, is an excellent approach um, because it, it gives the man, it empowers the man on the street. So, so far that's that's very good. Um, these centers analyze information and identify trends to share timely intelligence with federal, state, and local law enforcement, including the Department for Homeland Security, obviously, which then further shares this information with other members of the intelligence community so that there's going to be a federal sort of horizontal sharing of information, right? So that the information is going to be shared at the federal level between all the different federal branches. The CIA will share it with the DOD, the DOD will share it with the FBI, FBI will share it with the blah, 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 blah. blah. Right? So information goes from the local law enforcement through the Department of Homeland Security Fusion Center, transfers that information to the federal level. Federal agents at a very, very high, obviously probably classified level, discuss the, that, inf the, that intelligence um, horizontally among the various departments, right? Um, which then further shares this information with other members of the intelligence community. In turn, DHS, the Department for Homeland Security, provides relevant and appropriate threat information um, from the intelligence community, from here, right? from, that means from, from, where is from again? Um, in turn, DHS provides relevant and appropriate threat information from the intelligence community back to fusion centers. Whoever wrote this needs a raise. This is fabulously written, right? Um, back to the fusion center. So the information goes back to the fusion center. Um, today, there are 72 centers, I already said that, blah, blah, blah. Our goal is to make every one of these fusion centers the centers for analysis, excellence, and provides useful, actionable information, blah, blah, blah. Right? This is like an analyst dream job, uh, I would imagine. Right? It's just raw intel, just info from everywhere, from all of these local, from all of these local agencies, all this intel is coming in, and you got to make sense of it, right? It's probably not an easy job to do, but, like, analysis, hardcore, right? Now, we recognized before that this information, it's not to say that the, there isn't um, a duality between the Joint Terrorism Task Force and local law enforcement. Local law enforcement and FBI agents and so on and so forth have always worked together, right? But the JTTF isn't, properly speaking, charged with that. The JTTF is, properly speaking, charged with working with law inf local law enforcement agencies to, you know, to find out who the bad guys are, right, and prosecute the bad guys, right? So. Um, conducting investigations with obviously the intent of arresting or prosecuting, you know, getting information to, you know, wiretap or whatever it might be. And there's all types of regulations. I'm not going to go into the legal stuff um, concerning that. But obviously we see that this is the sort of overarching structure so far. There is, um, there is uh, however, a relationship between the JTTF and the Department for Homeland Security Fusion Clearing Center. Uh, uh, fusion centers, right? The fusion center, uh, actually I erased it, I'll put it back up. The fusion center, which I'll just now abbreviate FC, right? The fusion center, as we saw, analyzes and shares information. Now, if you're analyzing information, obviously that information has been collected, right? Remember, we talked about the CAD intelligence model. So, if we're talking about Intel, Intel comes in, right? And we'll just say, let's, let's call it I1. I, I1. So Intel comes in. That intelligence, I1, is processed and analyzed. And what ends up happening is, based on its communication with the federal government, federal government's communication, information being created, an assessment is made, and we recognize that I1 um, is related to and is transformed into something new. Right? Remember, the product of... Um, in, in a discussion of system, the system dynamics of intelligence handling, the product of any good intel is new information. This new information, Intel 2, which came from Intel 1, conceptually, right, is then given to uh, the JTTF. Right? Because they can't both be charged with primarily gathering information. There's a lot in gathering information and analyzing the information. So what ends up happening is, listen, you guys, just sort of conceptually, 
You guys do all the gathering. Go out, get all the information, analyze it, make sense of it. You talk to the bureaucrats, they'll talk amongst themselves, they'll tell you what they think, and then give us a report. Based on that report, we're going to make moves, right? Based on that report, we're going to work with the local law enforcement community and the, what is it, I forget what, SL, and the uh, state local, I'll memorize that soon, S-L-T-T, state local, state local tribal territorial, I remember that, state local tribal territorial, so that we can get the bad guys, right? So that we can get the bad guys, and, you know, that's how it works, right? So as far as intelligence community, it's not that um, the Joint Terrorism Task Force isn't directly um, involved in the collection and analysis of intel, but there's a specialized department. The fact that there's a specialized department charged with that responsibility, obviously any layman can figure this out, obviously means that the burden is being shifted to the Fusion Center to do assessment gathering of intel, which leaves the JTTF free to then use that intel um, to, to prosecute and build a case, right? which, is, which I think is pretty effective. What we see in this model is that this model, and obviously this goes this way as well, right? Um, so this is the sort of the fully fleshed out version. Um, what we end up seeing in this model is that it's both a bottom-up approach and a top-down approach, right? Information is siphoned to those in the highest positions of power, and among themselves they're able to assess this information, and then information is um, diffused back down. And by the time it gets back down, then, you know, we're able to identify what we know that we know and what we know that we don't know and so on. So it's always important to recognize, and for me, this is a, this is a great structure. This is, you know, and I might, just, I might be biased, obviously, but, and I'm not, it doesn't just have to be with the United States government, right? Specifically, I'm doing national um, security and homeland security affairs in the U.S., but this structure, right, you can substitute the different departments, right? Now we're getting technical, as I said we would, but you can just pull this out pull out the technical functions and think of just local law enforcement in any country, right? Think of an agency within a, um, uh, a government where that agency, whatever the name of that agency might be, is charged with gathering and analyzing the data. Well, if you have an agency that's charged with gathering and analyzing data, that creates um, some freedom in some other agency, whatever you want to call it, to actually take that data after it's been assessed, after it's been analyzed, and use that data to, to really go and prosecute those bad guys, intervene, stop the bad guys, do whatever you need to do, right? So it doesn't have to be, again, um, I'm talking specifically about the United States and how the structure is handled, and all of this is public information, um, but what's important is to recognize the overall structure, and this is, this is the overall structure. Again, the point of me doing this is to give um, one resource, one repository, where you can get all of, the, not all of the information, but a vast amount of the information. It took me a long time to put this together. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, but now that it's put together, now we can, you know, you can say, oh, no, you should have added this, and maybe I should do this, and blah, 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 and whatever. All right. So um, really all I want to do now, uh, and I'm not going to spend really any time on this, pages 5, 6, 7, pages 5, 6, and 7 are my attempts to um, address and show, point within the legal code, within the law, how the CAD intelligence model, collection, um, analysis, and dissemination of intelligence, is justified in the legal code. And I'm not going to go through the legal code. It's there for you to read on your own. And I did this for, you know, other theorists and other poli scientists or, 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 or um, JDs that want to do their own research, right? This is, this is how research is done. You, you put out information, but you always give your references so that other people can do their own research. So... Hopefully you use this for whatever you might want to use it for. Um, so in me justifying the collection phase of the um, CAD model, I looked at Part 2, Section 2.3 and 2.6 of Executive Order 12.333 of the United States Intelligence um, Activities. So that's what I use to, to justify the collection phase, right? So that particular statute justifies my assessment that there is a collection phase. Then. The next phase, the analysis phase, I looked at uh, Title I, Section 102A, G through H of the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act um, and it, of 2004. Talked about the various forms of analysis, how we go about making sense of uh, analysis and assessment of intel and information, blah, blah, blah. All of this, again, public information. Read it, go through it as your own leisure. I'm not going to go through each stance there. And then lastly, uh, as far as dissemination of information, uh, I looked at Executive Order. 
13356 of August uh, 2007, uh, August uh, um, 27, 2004, um, to justify the dissemination phase of the act. And I bold the important part, strengthen the effective conduct of United States intelligence activities, dissemination of information among agencies, and so on, right? So you can see um, what I attempted to do is give you a very, very general structure in which we can talk about what I'm classifying as a CAD intelligence model, and basically collection um, uh, analysis and dissemination. Again, I have not incorporated storage, which is arguably a part, like a fourth part um, of information because there's that's its own complications, especially when we're talking about inf information in 21st century cyber terrorism and data mining and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into that stuff on YouTube. Um, and then we arrive at this final, this final structure, right? Um, and what we recognize then is when we're talking about intelligence um, dissemination, and I need to change that, I don't want this to be section three, right? Um, when we're talking about um, intelligence dissemination, we can talk about vertical dissemination, but we can also talk about horizontal dissemination, right? And there's even horizontal dissemination here as well, right? And I'll make sure I, I amend that as well, right? Because there's, um, there's vertical and horizontal dissemination. The dissemination of information between the Department of Homeland Security Fusion Center and the Joint Terrorism Task Force, horizontal dissemination of information. Dissemination, as I read uh, a number of times, from the Department of Homeland Security Fusion Center to uh, the bureaucrats, vertical dissemination, from the bureaucrats back down to the local vertical dissemination. So, I mean, it's a pretty solid, the architecture of its intelligence dissemination within the United States, and this is, this, is, this is just what's accessible, right? This is what you can find on the internet. I guarantee you there's more stuff, uh, much, 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 much deeper structure to this that's, that's private, that's, you know, classified information. And, you know, the day they declassify that information, I'll be the first person to read it up because, I, you know, this is, this is, for me, pretty interesting, pretty interesting stuff. But based on what's not, uh, what, what's not classified, what's public domain info, this is the structure knowing full well there's a deeper structure. I don't know what that deeper structure could be. I have an idea of what it could be, but I'm not a conspiracy theorist, so I wouldn't put out information that I don't know to be true. But this is what we know to be the structure of the um, intelligence architecture for national security. And basically, the um, fusion centers analyze and share information. The Joint Terrorism Task Force um, conducts investigation based on that information. That information is channeled upward vertically to the federal government, who DOD shares with FBI, FBI, CIA, and blah, blah, blah. That information then comes back down to the Fusion Center so that when the Joint Terrorism Task Force gets it, I mean, it's gone through like four phases of analysis, right? It's been analyzed by the local law enforcement. It's been analyzed at what I'm cl classifying at this regional clearinghouse level. It's been analyzed and assessed at a federal level, back down, and now we can move on you know, move on, stopping the bad guys from doing whatever it is that they're trying to do. Um, so that concludes uh, the second section of the assessment. Uh, in the third section, I will continue, um, to be honest with you, it gets deeper than this, I'll continue at a yet a deeper level of intelligence handling and intel intelligence assessment. Um, hope you stick around and watch uh, the rest of the series. With that being said, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell. Have a good day.